Ah yes, welcome, I'm Christian. This is a um, tutorial how to make roguelike in Pico 8. Uh, and we are nearing completion. We are close to it. And basically what we're implementing right now, this, the process that we're going through right now, is just like adding variation, adding gameplay variation. If you play through this game, you can try playing through the game now. It's kind of a bit samey most of the time. It's like always the same thing happening, always the same monsters. The monster gets stronger and eventually, you know, it's very difficult to defeat them. It, uh, it doesn't really change that much. And that kind of makes it a bit, a bit um, monotonous. It's good that it only has like eight levels because uh, you kind of like, uh, it's, uh, you feel it's overstaying it welcome. So in order to con um, counteract it, we're kind of adding more variation so it's less predictable what's happening. So you're always confronted with new situations, maybe new solutions for old situations. So uh, last episode, we already implemented the stun mechanic. So now we can get stunned by eating the wrong food. Something like this. So now the sloppy fillet stuns. By the way, something that people suggested, um, and I def definitely feel that idea, it would be nice once you uh, know what a food does to maybe have like a little reminder on the bottom of the screen telling you, oh, by the way, this food, remember this food does this thing. Um, we can definitely implement that, but I want to keep it like on the very, um, uh, bottom line like the, the that's something that comes at the very end and not now because if you look at this it's we have 6300 tokens so it's like less than 2000 tokens left so uh, as i told you we are kind of like nearing the the limit of what 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 this game can be i want to make sure that i get all my ducks uh, that i got to get, get all my my cows off the ice <laughs> i don't know if that's even a, a thing that you say in english but yeah, the idea is that I get like all of the basics covered and then we're going to still see how much tokens we have to, left to tweak around things to kind of like maybe polish up things. I think it's kind of fine to be like, OK, it's up to you. You have to remember uh, it's kind of like an interesting um, a more, more of a uh, challenge to to the food, um, food abilities, although I do understand like the arguments that the UI should help you out if you already went through the process of figuring out what the individual food does. Oh, by the way, I just noticed this star doesn't apply anymore. Okay, so um, we had one type of monster. And that monster was called the um, the giant scorpion. It was monster number eight. And that monster should be stun. It should be a stun monster. Actually, I do have this um, array here called mob spec, which means a mob special ability. And that kind of like um, takes care, like tracks of certain types of um, abilities, like the special abilities. Some of them have question marks because I haven't implemented them in the prototype yet. So I don't know if we're gonna implement it in, in here, this version, but definitely there is a, um, there is a monster uh, tag with a stun spec. And that's something that we're gonna do now. So the idea is that the monster will attack me and um, I get stunned if they attack me. There is a bit of a problem here though, that if you think about this, um, if you think this through, getting hit by the monster will result in you immediately dying. Um, because what will happen, you get stunned, then the monster attacks you again, you get stunned again, the monster hurts you again, like, it creates like this stun lock kind of situation. That's not some, what, what I wanted to have with this monster. With this monster, I just want to have like, okay, if you get stunned, then you kind of have to, uh, um, you get, you know, you you get easily swarmed. Um, there's two solutions for this. One is that it doesn't always stun, that it just sometimes stuns you. Uh, the other solution is to, um, and that's the one I prefer, is it always stuns you, but the, each monster has like one stun charge. And once it stunned you once, the next time it won't stun you again, it will just like normally attack you. So that's something I want to implement here. It's gonna go charge equals, um, I'm gonna call it one, and then it gets get depleted. Uh, I call it charge because we might apply it to different monsters as well, or we might have monsters that have bigger charges. For now, I'm just gonna keep it at one, and it's like a neutral charge because, you know, depending on the monster, um, um, you might have charges for different abilities. Maybe there's a monster that does something that is less destructive than stunning, and then you might want to uh, use the charge for that. So, um, yeah, so here's where we're attacking. And here's where we're hitting the player. 
right? So here's something I want to do is um, what I want to do here is if um, so do we know? Oh, we are not saving. So yeah, we should also probably save the spec. Spec equals mob spec. Um, so if spec, uh, if m dot spec equals stun, then else Leather. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'm not sure about the sound effect. If this should be, um, I think the sound effect should always happen because you know, even if the monster stuns you, it's still kind of like an impact. And then instead, um, st uh, if spec equals stun and m dot charge is greater than zero. Um, stun mob, the player, p mob. Then we're gonna reduce the charge. Like so. P mob, p mob. And that should be basically it. Um, now we need to test it somehow. We can just like advance to the floor where we're gonna encounter this, this monster, but I think he might just one shot us. <laughs> Let's see. It's gonna be the... <laughs> because it's very advanced monster. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, so there's one here. Let's see if we can get, get hit by this guy. So yeah, now he attacked me twice. Once he attacked me uh, and I got stunned, and then he attacked me one, one more time while I was stunned. Yeah. So I got hit twice and for two damage. No, I hit, was hit once for three damage. He does three damage, I think. Let me see. Yeah, he does three damage. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So this wasn't so, so bad, but you know, in a situation where I was swarmed by other monsters, this would be disastrous. Um, it's not a really th a thing that, that changes the strategy too much. You yeah, just like the strategy is the same. Don't get hit, and if you're um, fighting the monster uh, one by one, uh, it's basically the monster hits you one. Um, the 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 reason for this is also one of the reasons is that you're not getting any actual um, damage for the stun. Just like hit mob is the, the you get the damage here, and the normal damage only goes through when you're not stunning when the monster is not stunning you. So um, we might change it so you get hit either way. It's just like the first attack will also stun you in addition to the hit points that would make the monster more dangerous. Um, it's that's something that we kind of have to figure out and see what happens when we play test this. But so far, this is something I'm gonna check off my list. I'm more interested into thinking about the other abilities of monsters. So we talked about blessing and curse. So let's implement those things, blessing and curses. So we're going to have a gameplay function and it's going to be very similar to, to the current function here. And it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be... Wait, it's gameplay or even gameplay. It's fine. There, there it is, stun mob. Okay, got it. Um, we're gonna have one function that is gonna be bless mob. Um, so generally, um, there's gonna be just there's not gonna be a blessing and a curse at the same time. We cannot be blessed and cursed at the same time. That seems to me like contradictory. So we're just gonna have like a blessing value. How much we are blessed. Uh, and if it's one, we are blessed. If it's zero, it's nothing happens. And if it's minus one, we are cursed. So it's kind of like just um, goes between one, uh, minus one and one. Um, so we're gonna do something MB bless equals um, mi uh, mid minus one, one MB bless plus val.
That's what I thought. So um, yeah, there's gonna be a flash. Um, now here we're gonna add a text. Um, so let's do something like um, local txt equals um, bless um, if val is smaller than zero, then txt equals curse. End. And then we're gonna float this txt above us. That's basically it. That's basically it. There's one little twist that I wanna do. Um, if you're gonna bless a, a ghost, uh, then that ghost is dead immediately. But you know, that's some, something they're gonna add more, uh, later on. Okay, so that's gonna be it. Let me think about this. Um, so let's see if we can make a pull this off. So MB um, bless is what we're gonna, the monster mob bless is what we wanna add next. So we're gonna go to the monsters and we're gonna add this a new ability called bless equals zero. So usually we are, we are neutral. And then also I want to add um, the, the two food stuff to my inventory that allow me to bless myself or curse myself. That's gonna be food number 17 and, and 18. Uh, where is it, where is it? Let's add 17 and 18. And finally, when I advance up the stairs, I want the, the blessing to be reset. So uh, we're gonna go gameplay, and when we hit the stairs, uh, 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 where is it? Step, there we go. Um, when we hit the stairs, we're gonna go um, p underscore mob bless equals zero. Whatever blessing we had, it gets deleted. And so the only uh, thing for us left to do is to, ma to make it count when we get hit. So it's basically here, let me see. DMG equals attack or, okay. And then so here we can do something like uh, add curse. So if we are cursed, the DMG gets multiplied um, or, or bless. So if um, defending mob, dot um, uh, bless is smaller than zero, then um, dmg equals uh, multiply equals two. Uh, else if um, defending monster, what was it again? Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna go, if we are blessed, then we're gonna half the damage. Maybe something we're gonna do here is, yeah, okay, that that's okay. Um, but uh, here, where we are get half the damage, we're gonna go uh, DMG equals floor, um, DMG divided by two. So we don't get any get any weird comma values. So if you're blessed, uh, oh yeah, in both cases we reset the we set the bless to zero because we've been attacked. So the blessing is kind of over. So the only thing that we have to add, consider now, is it, we kind of don't see it, right? Um, maybe we can feel it if we, if we actually try to, uh, there's a problem here. Multiply equals doesn't exist, is that how, how, is that how it works? There's a then missing. Oh, there's a then missing here. Mm -hmm. So let me see, yellow ribs. Mm, yellow ribs is cursed, so now I'm cursed. Oh, I did, we didn't see the float go up. Ah, because we haven't, uh, the, the eating actually doesn't do anything. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so here's gonna be bless mob uh, MB minus one. And then bless mob MB one, right? So let's try this, sloppy casserole. Yes, we're cursed. Um, maybe the effect is not quite okay. Um, Um, I want to move the effect a bit further down. So let's let's go four. Ah, press the button. Maybe even one more. Five. Uh, 
Maybe one more, six. Yep, that seems good. Okay, so let's let's try to get hit while we're cursed. We should be cursed now. And now we got hit for two damage because um, because we are a curse. And now if we eat this, we get for zero because one divided by two is 0 0.5 and that gets rounded down. And we should have the similar effect when we throw um, the food at a monster, they should get blessed and cursed. So for example, if we throw this wet wrap, <laughs> Um, it's now a blessed monster, so if you attack it, it, it doesn't get, get killed. Works perfectly. Um, there's one little detail I want to add, and that is going to be... Um, I don't... I want to see if I'm blessed or cursed. That's something I want to see. So, um, something I would love to do here is... Uh, here in the upper line here, where we see our, our attack and defense stats, it would be nice if it showed me like if I'm normal, blessed, or cursed. Um, so let's try to implement that as well. Um, that's gonna be here. Stat wind. This is the stat window where we show what kind of stats we have right now. So here we're gonna do something like, um, hmm. Okay, something like local txt equals okay. And if um, pmob dot bless is smaller than zero, then else if pmob is greater than zero and so forth, right? So greater than zero other than end. And so just gonna be, uh, whoops. So if it's smaller than zero, we are cursed. Curse. We're just gonna call it curse. No, so it's kind of like um, because the problem is we add another we add another character. It might be difficult to to fit everything into into the window. Um, bless. And then here I'm gonna see how I did it last time around because this is like layout stuff and I don't wanna. Okay, mm -hmm, that's good. So we are gonna do, oh wait, do we already have TXT? We are using TXT, oh no. Oh wait, that's great. So let's grab this out and put it in here. And then, that's right. And then we're gonna put this down here. So TXT dot dot attack. I'm not gonna do a space after the equals, um, after the colon. And like this, and like this. It's a bit more compact now, let's see. Okay, and so now we know exactly, um, the, it says okay here, and if we get cursed, let's see, let's get cursed. And now we are cursed. And again, if we had at the D, then we would need another character, we'd need to find a character somewhere, and then that window might, might need to get bigger. So I think that's that's fine. Okay. There is a bit something that I don't find quite satisfying, and that is there is no sound associated with it. So maybe soon in one of the future episodes, we're going to actually start importing some of the sounds from the prototype. I have like some really nice sound effects for this, um, because I, I, I think a lot of the fun of this um, is caused by, you know, the, the sound effects communicating everything to you. Um, all right. Uh, so, oh yeah, there's uh, one problem, one issue that we still want to implement, and that is going to be the slow monsters. So let me let me show you what I mean. So there's going to be one monster that's going to be the um, slow monster. So we have like the fast monster. Also, that's something we're going to deal at some point. But um, for now, I want to have the <clears throat> here the slow monster. Okay, so here's the slow monster, and um, so this, with the slow monster is we kind of and this is a bit of an issue here. We kind of want them to move only every second move. Um, so, you know, so he kind of moves once and then if he moved last time or last turn, we kind of want to keep track of that. 
and then um, then he wouldn't move again. He, he will still attack at the regular speed, but he when he's moving, he will just move slower every second turn. Um, so we kind of have to figure out how to do that. I mean, we could like try to do, be like really cute and like r r you know reuse the charge ability, but I think the simplest would, would, would be something like last moved equals false. So if he moved on a last turn, and then be like, okay, so here, do AI, AI wait, that's fine, AI attack, uh, that's, uh, attacking is fine, but moving to the player, so this is where we would, okay, um, would think about if we're going to do this even or not, so something like, okay, can see, uh, like seeing, updating the seeing is okay, and then the are growing is also okay but here's where we're actually moving so we're gonna go if m dot spec equals slow and m dot last moved then and m dot last moved equals false and return. Um, right. Um, and then also I want in them to if he um, if he's not moving, if he's just waiting, then definitely we're gonna do a last moved m dot last moved equals false. And here where um, he hasn't moved and is kind of de-aggroed and we also do a last move equals false. But otherwise he moves, so that's fine. And that's gonna be basically it from what I understand. That should be, let's try that. Um, that requires us also to kind of like move along to the very far end of the dungeon because these monsters spawn at the very end. It might be worthwhile to spawn the monsters early on uh, because they're kind of like strategically, they're kind of interesting monsters. It might teach the player that it did. Oh, <gasps> oh, look at this. Oh no. How did that happen? Somehow it. Oh, we have to, that's that's a serious thing. We have to actually deal with this somehow. Um, so I'm not sure why this happened, but somehow it collapsed all of the hallways. It, why didn't it reconnect? Where's the exit, by the way? Is, is it down there in the... Oh man, okay, we have to deal with this later on. Uh, also, is this really the best place? I'm, I'm starting to get a feel that there's something wrong with the with the procedural generation because the stairway wasn't really that far away from my entrance. <sighs> Always the same thing. Okay, and anyways, here are the enemies that we're looking for. So they're aggroed. They will move now, and they shouldn't move now. They did move. Always move. Okay. Um... Oh, we, I, I think we never set last move to true. Okay. Last moved equals true. Um, maybe a, a good solution would be to always set last move to false and just sort of set it to true if, if we actually moving them. Uh, so we're not wasting. Yeah, last move equals false. We always set it to false, and we only just set it to true when we're actually moving it. Oh man, this bumps me out. Okay, true, false, false. Except if we do that, no, that's not something we can do because if we move that, we never actually going to be a situation where last move is going to be true. 
So, um, yeah, we can't have that. Yeah, let's do something like return true. False. Oh yeah, and here return false as well. So it might be worthwhile. Let's try to followings uh, approach. I'm thinking something like this. Last moved this is also okay. So let's do something like here where we're moving. Instead of saying moving, we're gonna go last moved equals m task. Right? And then moving is equals last moved or moving. Right, so this actually takes like the into consideration that our functions always like return true or false whenever the, the mob is moving. Um, and we can use that actually to make sure that we we remember if we moved last time, last frame or not. Let's try that. Oh, that was a bad situation. Whew. It wasn't so bad that we were in like this um, separate area. The problem was that um, that it spawned us there. That was the issue. It shouldn't. It shouldn't have spawned us there in the first place. Okay, so here's some some I call them golems. So they should move now. Oh, they didn't move. Now they moved. Wait. Okay. Why well, they they didn't move the first time around. So that's why I was a bit confused. They should be moving from the very first move. Okay. All right. So getting discovered. Didn't move. Now he's moving. Okay. So this is definitely an issue that we have now. Why does this happen? So he, we add the float and we should return false. Ah. Okay, the AI wait returns true always. Mm -hmm. What if you make it false? I mean, it just adds a float, right? Okay, um, this is bad because we have some hallway monsters here and the hallway monsters are really... Okay, so this guy here. So he should move now. Okay, he moved. Now he shouldn't move. He didn't move. Okay, he should move now. Okay, good. Works perfectly. Cool, so that, um, oh yeah, now uh, one more thing, little detail, but I think that's that's worth it. Um, so if we're gonna draw us, if a uh, gameplay, um, right, because there's like this monster we called Ghost. Uh, let's let's call it just Ghost. Um, so initially I wanted to have like this monster that manipulates, um, manipulates um, line of sight, but uh, I ran out of tokens, so I decided not to make them manipulate line of sight. We might still change it, but I think it's kind of fun to have a monster that when they attack you, they also curse you. Um, so let's do that, why not? It's kind of like the monster that stuns, but instead of the curses. Uh, and also I, it would be kind of fun if the monster not just curses you, but also if it can be defeated by blessing it. Um, so let's, let's, let's implement that. Um, so this is going to be here in the mobs. <clears throat> when it attacks the player. So if mspec equals stun, stun mob. Else if m, m, m dot spec equals ghost and, and so forth. M, m charge. Yeah, okay. No, we, uh, else if mspec equals ghost and um, mcharge then um, bless mob p mob 
minus one. And the charge gets depleted. Like so. So again, we're not getting, we're not hitting. We maybe in this case, we actually should get hit. Maybe I actually should get hit and curse at the same time. Um, because the curse itself is not that bad. Mm. Yeah, and if, if you can just get hit and then get cursed, then that's, especially if you're close to the stairs, because then it's like really don't, doesn't matter if you get cursed because you can just exit the stairs. So we're gonna get hit, hit but then blessed. And not the other way around, not like first bless and then hit, because that means he would always do the, um, the double damage. Um, Good. And then also something I want to add is uh, if that monster gets hit by a bless, then it will get killed immediately. So we're going to go draw, game, draw, where is it? Uh, update, gameplay, bless mob. Um, uh -huh. So we're going to add the float. We're going to if val. Um, is greater than zero and <clears throat> or let's, let's go like if mb dot spec equals ghost and val is greater than zero then and so here we are going to add the code for for getting killed where is it hit mob hit mob hit mob uh huh Like so, bam. Perfection. So let's see if this works. So the, the blessing should be the purple souvlaki in our case. So let's let's see if we can throw a purple souvlaki at a ghost. There we go. Okay, so this is the ghost. I'm gonna throw the souflaki at it. Um, ah, yeah, def is not a thing. Let's try it again. So this time it's gonna be barbecue souflaki. Okay, there's some ghosts in here. Let's try that. Okay. And then uh, we're gonna use the Barbecue so souvlaki throw bam. Yep, it was blessed. So so the monster was killed excellent um, So let's see if what happens if we get hit by the monster uh, one thing I noticed the monsters are turning around in the wrong direction uh, That's because our, the way our sprite is set up and the way the monster sprites are set up are flipped around Okay, so now we got cursed um, and yeah, we are actually have a curse up there and so now, when we get hit one more time, we can die anyway, but we'll get hit for six damage. Good. So this is done. So that means food effects are like at least the basic one um, that we had from the uh, prototype are done. Um, we might come up with more food effects. And so, uh, but, you know, implementing food effects, as you saw, costs a bunch of tokens, depending on how complex the food effect is. Um, so I want to like keep continuing implementing all of the features that we still need to implement uh, before we decide how to progress further, how to maybe um, tweak, you know, add more, more, um, um, more gameplay, more food effects, more monster types, uh, or maybe uh, actually fix some of our generator problems. I probably will have to sit down between the episode recordings and do like a stress test, kind of like generate a bunch of levels and always make sure that we're gonna get a, com a connection between um, the beginning and ending. And then there must be some kind of problem somewhere along the line that we, that we haven't thought about. I'm not sure what happened there. there I saw there was a, hmm. Well, it's, it's fine if the tunnels are disconnected, but if it's, it's not fine, if we're gonna get spawned there. That's kind of like the important thing. So I, I thought I had it fixed, but for some reason I'm not. Uh, in the next episode, we're probably gonna deal with the ending screen and the start screen and logos, kind of like doing very, very decorative stuff. Um, the code for this episode is always gonna be, as always, in doobly-doo. Um, there's gonna be, you can buy those beautiful uh, token limit t-shirts and we are approaching the token limits or they're very topical. And of course, you should visit our Discord channel where people are discussing this and other games as well. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.